Hey, what's going on? YouTube Kenny here. So today I'm going to show you how to YOLO like a champion, like a complete alpha ape that you are. I'm going to show you how to take you those two bananas and turn them into one million bananas. But no money back guarantee. You're probably going to lose everything. But hell, uh, might as well show you how to try to do it with a little bit of an edge, right? So here we are. We're going to talk about it. If you're new to this channel, Redcliffe Research is an independent research firm that deals a lot with signal detection, looking for the anomaly in the noise, taking those high probability trades. That said, this is very, what my daughter would call out of pocket. See, I'm cool, I'm hip. Uh, it's out of pocket for Red Cliff Research. That said, we're still gonna do it because I think a lot of people generally wanna do it. And today was a really shitty market, uh, a lot of chop. Not only a lot of chop, big sell off at the end because of the Fed meeting minutes. Uh, anyways. The deal is, you know, when you feel pretty helpless like this and you've been sitting on your hands, you have all that dry powder. Hopefully you have a lot of dry powder left. Uh, and if you don't, get ready to take out a loan. That's not financial advice. Don't do it. Anyways, point is uh, you're sitting on your hands. You're like, hey, I got a G to throw around. Let's YOLO right now because I don't want to sit on my hands anymore. How do I do it, Kenny? That's what I'm here for. And if you're here for that, then stick around. This might take a while. Uh, because we do everything in one take here at Redcliffe Research. You all know that. But if you're new, you may not know that. But I do stop and take sips of wine and stuff like that uh, as we go along. But this one might be a little long because we're actually going to try to set up a really good trade. And I'm just going to talk through it. I have some of it mapped out, but not everything mapped out. But it's going to be a five-step process. So let's go ahead and get into it. So this is a compound interest calculator. The reason I'm showing you this is if you took $1,000 and you say, hey, I want to start with $1,000, uh, you're going to have to uh, basically win 100% trade 10 times. So you're going to have to have 10 winning trades that uh, give you 100% 10 times to make a million dollars, all right? Uh, highly unlikely, highly uh, improbable. That said, there's other ways to do it, and uh, this is not the way to do it. But if, you, if you're determined to YOLO, uh, just think of it in that concept. But more or less, what if we say, hey, I want that 350% gains. Uh, you're getting into two, two and a half, three sigma land. Um, what's the fair market value? Well, you don't even have to do it. You probably have to do it like five times. Nope, four times, right? Let's do four times. Yeah, nope, you need five times. All right, then you'll have to do it five times. You have to get five winning trades in a row. What's two winning trades look like with that? So if you had $1,000, you can turn it into $20,000. That's with just two winning trades that have 350% upside from a thousand you see what i'm getting at all right so you say all right that's too much money to yolo uh, i'll do a hundred kenny and eh, don't know if you can do a hundred because options well no because you're going to be highly out of the money okay let's say you can do a hundred let's do a hundred uh so let's do two trades you get 2025 let's do five trades uh, 184,000. so if you get a 350 percent trade uh five times you have 184,000. you're like kenny where are you getting this 350%? Uh, from my YOLO trading days uh, and my uh, scientifically back-testing YOLO trading days, 350% is really kind of the stratospherical limit before it becomes like a black swan event. You might be able to get it, but eh. uh, I'll tell you what's realistic, 250. 250, you could probably get a couple trades in a row, 250. Let's see what three trades in a row looks like. Three trades in a row at 250, 4,200. Let's just make that $1,000 just to make it more more sensible. $42,000. So $42,000 uh, after. So what we're going to attempt to do is going to find three trades in a row, $1,000 principal interest, 250% uh, gains for each trade. Is that realistic? No, not at all. But we're going to try. Uh, we're going to attempt to do it. So here's the deal. You want to be uh, this guy up top going towards the madness, just crushing it, going for these diamonds. Don't be this guy right here, okay? Uh, this is important because if you're this guy right here, then you just just stop watching this video. I mean, yeah, I guess you can watch it for entertainment purposes. You're like, Kenny, you're going to do this for realsies? Uh, sure, I guess. If you really want to, we can do this for realsies, I guess. So why not? It doesn't, doesn't hurt, right? Uh, we can play this for realsies, uh, but uh, that's kind of what our risk on account is trying to do, but even more... Uh, in a more sensible way, right? I always joke that I think the risk on account is going to um, uh, unironically get to a million before the uh, stock signals account. Either way, uh, be be this dude. You know, don't don't get to the end and uh, be defeated. You gotta you gotta be hungry. If you're not hungry, it's not gonna work. All right, so here we go. Excuse me. 
First thing you want to do is find a high probability setup. Okay. And what does that mean? Uh, there can mean a lot of things. So let me show you a couple things that it could mean. So here is the Uvixi, and we talked about this and we showed you the standard deviation chart and where it was at. So this is a, a regression channel showing, God, you're probably like boring, Kenny. This is too hard. I'm not just simplify. Uh, it's going down a lot. And once it goes down a lot, and this is like 95% land, this is 95% land. So anything up on top is 5% chance. So if it's it's riding this channel down, you know, we called it here. And we got this spike and we got out with like 35%. But had we held hold, held it into here, we would have uh, upwards of 400% on our options. All right. So uh, taking trades like that that are probabilistically uh, on your side. 90% uh, or better. So a couple things that you can do is find uh, a stock at its all-time highs, for instance. Uh, let me go look at some stocks that maybe kind of fit that mark. Uh, let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, let's go to trading view. So let's look at Asana. Asana is at all-time highs, right? And so, you know, uh, it's double topped. You're like, Kenny, boring. All right, find a, find a stock that is at an all-time high and just ride that mofo. Just be like, hey, there's something with this stock and we're going to go with it. So Asana would be a great candidate. Why? Because work from home and all that stuff. But don't overthink it. And the reason why you don't want to overthink it because like you're not smart enough to figure out what the market really wants. It's it's a lot of luck. And so don't overthink that piece of it when you're YOLOing. If you're investing for sure, you want to think of all that. You want to line everything up. But for the YOLO, who gives a damn? Uh, don't look for a catalyst unless no one knows about it. So Key was talking about uh, 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 AI Day for uh, Tesla. Not a good candidate for the catalyst to go up. Not a good candidate. Not a good. Because there's a couple things that happens there. There's a thing called IV crush. When people know that something is coming up, uh, implied volatility goes up, down, sideways, whatever. doesn't matter. It goes away. Uh, and we need implied volatility for this, boys and girls, because we need a maximum leverage. So if you're already lost, let me stop and talk to you about high probability setups one more time. You're looking for something that can move a lot very quickly. So another thing that you can look for is a consolidation pattern. So I don't know if Viacom is still consolidating, but let me take a look. Yes, this is a consolidating pattern, something like this. Preferably not on the floor, but if we're not doing all-time highs, look for something like this. It's got to give one of these days, right? It's not going to just trade at 40 because if so, people are gonna just going to throw iron condors on this bastard forever and just print money. And you're like, Kenny, what's an iron condor? It just means that you're not you're going to make money if the stock doesn't do anything. You're like, dang, is this already too complicated because, you know, I need to know how to do all this other stuff. Uh, yeah, but we're going to simplify in a second, basically buy options. Okay. So if you're already lost, all I'm trying to show you is a way to buy options. But if you're not lost, follow around and uh, I'll kind of talk to you about all this stuff. Uh, so seriously, this is a consolidation pattern. It's one of the patterns that we've tested. Basically compression, the more compression you get, the faster it can spike up and do things. Right. And if you didn't know, this is where, uh, Bill Huang lost his, uh, $20 billion, right? This thing right here. So <laughs> It'd probably be a good candidate to uh, to do the reverse, right? To the, do the inverse. And the interesting thing is, have you noticed this? Like, there's no real pressure here, and the market's under a lot of pressure. But Viacom doesn't really care because this is absolutely probably the floor, right? Uh, I mean, so anyways, point is, if you want to go long here, might be a decent time to do it. Uh, maybe not though, because you know, when we look at sentiment decay, we look at 10 day windows, 10 day periods of compression. And these 10 days have already kind of, you know, recycled a bunch of times. So nine days is like the ideal. So one thing that you want to look at is like something like Intel. And you can see this is kind of failing to the downside. And we know AMD and a lot of the other uh, manufacturers have been stealing Intel's lunch. So maybe this is a good time for a put. Maybe a put can get all the way down to $48 and 13 cents. So Let's say we do Intel and we go for a put. You're like, why, Kenny? I don't know, because we're going to try it. So let's say Intel, uh, we've drawn the support line. We say, hey, we can get down to $48.13 in a big sell-off. So you say to yourself, okay, now that I've looked at the chart, let me think about how fast this could go down. And now you got to get really lucky and have it go down really fast. But in order to not lose all your money, you would draw like a trend line down here and you'd say to yourself, okay, what does this chart realistically look like? Would it do this? No, because it'd probably do this, 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 or something like that. And then it finally gets down right maybe before earnings to 48.15 and then pop. So you say, okay, 
well, that's when is that? So you scroll through and um, am I still recording? Wow, that would be a shame if I wasn't. Uh, you scroll through and uh, you say, okay, this is 21 October 21. So 21 October, it's uh, August right now. Uh, and so here's the deal. Uh, if you're super risky, then, well, don't be super risky because there's just no need. You're going to be risky enough with the leverage, okay? So don't be risky with the time frame or the duration. So now time. The first thing is the time. So you're, you're choosing your options. You're like, okay, uh, 20 October is when I think it'll hit my price target. Let's go um, one month out. You're like, Kenny, why are you going a month, month out? Because I want some theta uh, left to sell <laughs> this option back when it doesn't hit that price target. So for instance, say it only goes to right here or it goes even flat or it goes against me to right here. Uh, you'll have some theta left to sell back so it won't expire completely worthless. So I always have 30 at the bare minimum on the back end unless I'm fully YOLOing, which I'm buying the weekly. If you want to fully YOLO, you're going to buy the weekly and you're going to say, okay, from here I needed to crash today. That's fine, but we're going to show you kind of the system for that. Remember, we need a lot of leverage. We need about 40 times leverage on each thing. So well, we'll play around with it. I'll show you what we're looking at. All right, so uh, we're going to go here to Options Strat right now, and we're going to go ahead and build an option. So optionsstrat.com, we're going to go to build. We're going to pull a long put because we're going to bet against Intel. And so we're going to put, oh, and that's interesting, Palantir is in there. What kind of idiot would short Palantir? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, so we see here that uh, if we buy the at the money, uh, what we can see here is we'll go, let's go profit loss percentage. Uh, and if we scroll through, uh, if it gets down to 49, we have 100%. What do we say we needed? We need 250%, right? Uh, per, I think we need, so we do need it 250. Yeah, we want 250% three times, we'll get 40,000 uh, off of that 1,000. So, okay, so 250% move is what we're looking for. Uh, and so we're saying that it can get to 48.13 by 9 September. Let's just say 9 September. So a couple weeks from now. And uh, so what we will do is we will check this out. Uh, so 48.15, so this range, let's do the chart range. Let's pop it up. Chart range 48.15, we can say it's going to get here. So let's just say 48 because YOLO. 185% uh, uh, gains if we buy the 52 put right now with the 17 uh, September date. But we said, let's go back one more time, we said it would happen 9 September, so that's actually perfect. Uh, but 187, 185% is not good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it even better. Uh, so we go out of the money. Uh, we should be moving it this way. Nope, we want to move it this way. Uh, what did we say we we're going to get to? Um, 48. So 48 back here. Damn, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Boys, boys, this is like, it's not working. Uh, there's only one way to do this. There you go. Um, okay, so it needs to happen before 10 September. So we, we're just going to have to go play with this nah all right so you have 264 if it gets a 48 by September 10th uh, and we're saying September 9th 256 uh, percent at expiration uh, so implied volatility 23 percent now so uh, how can we calculate this well we would go over here and figure out how much leverage you're actually using so if you want to just kind of do it with a normal leveraged options, uh, we can figure it out right here. So we go to all products. Uh, if you're using Think or Swim, and let's go to Intel, all right? And then we go down here, and we said we were doing the September 10th, right? The weeklies, and we were doing at the money right here. And so we have a uh, delta of 40 here. So let's take a look at that. And I'm just going to put it in our little nifty, nifty spreadsheet here. Uh, options leverage. So we have a delta of 0 0.40. That's actually kind of high. Why can't we? Interesting. Uh, okay, so the bid is the bid is 48. The ask is 52. Share price right now is uh, 
the underlying is $52.19. And uh, okay, so there you have it. Uh, we have leverage of 41 times leverage. So you are leveraging uh, quite a bit. Uh, and then if you know, like uh, leverage usually looks like this. You ask your broker to borrow mar margin and he gives you like four times leverage if you have $25 thousand dollars or more usually for td Ameritrade, i'm talking about uh, there's other offshore brokers that will give you way more leverage some give you 10 times leverage uh that said why is that good because it's liquid but guess what this is 41 times leverage so you're leveraging your money 41 times in this trade so just understand that that's why you get so much winning if it goes your way um okay so anyways if this works out we get our 250 percent and we are good to go just remember, you need to get this trade right like more than once in a row. Uh, so there's other ways to do this, right? So if it's a complete crash or a complete uh, rally, you can get thousands of percent, of course. Like if it gets to 40 here, 972 percent. The problem is that's highly unlikely. You need something like Asana. And that's why I said if maybe you get to Asana over here and for some reason it's going nuts, uh, you know, that's still not as big of a move as you would think. Uh, you need something like that. And so, you know, if you're trying to get 250%, that's what it would take. And that's how many times it would take. So let's just play around with this one more time just to kind of show you, though. And you say, Kenny, what if I get really lucky and I can do it uh, four times in a row? Well, yeah, let's let's play around with it four times in a row, 150,000. Okay. It's totally acceptable, right? Totally easy to do. Uh, let's say, okay, Ken, that's kind of ridiculous. Let's do 150%. Uh, maybe I can get a bunch of those. Those are a lot easier to do. And maybe I do that five times. Uh, you still get 100,000, five times at 150%. So what is my point? Uh, my point is if you have YOLO money that you want to throw around and you want to do some really good research and take high probability trades, maybe you don't get 100%. Maybe it's more like, you know, 33% per trade or something like that. I mean, you're still not doing too bad i mean look 15 trades uh 15 trades at that rate uh and you take a bunch of losing trades so say it takes e takes you even longer take a bunch of losing trades so let's take it down to 15 percent uh take a bunch of losing trades how many trades would it take say you take 50 good trades uh you still get to 1 million what is my point uh it's all about asymmetric risk asymmetric risk boys and girls and you know what we went away from the uh, PowerPoint but basically let's recap with the PowerPoint let's go back to it recap with the PowerPoint uh, we kind of went through everything uh, high probability setup or flip a coin because it's basically the same damn thing for most of you most of you you're not gonna have any kind of statistical advantage when it comes to this so just go ahead and flip a coin whichever way you think it's gonna go leverage like Bill Wong 20 times uh, in fact you know he levered, I want to say, almost 200x, right, with his little credit swaps. Uh, that's for a different show, different episode. But, yes, he was leveraged to the TITS is what they call it, what the kids say. Uh, anyways, find an options chain you like. We showed you how to do that. Determine if it has 40x leverage or better. And we showed you with our Intel setup that that indeed was a uh, 40x candidate. Look, 41 times leverage. And we did it on the fly. I had no idea that that was going to happen. But we did it and we showed you. Easy peasy. Sit back uh, and enjoy the show. Watch it on your big screen TV because you know what? Uh, if you're going to YOLO, YOLO with class. Maybe sit back, relax, watch it with uh, your loved one and, uh, you know, Maybe divorce incoming, maybe not. Maybe the opposite. Maybe you guys go out for a nice little dinner or something like that. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, this was a fun video, but really, you know, I'm just trying to show you that, uh, you know, you can think about these and you can think about trades in a different way. Uh, in fact, you know, you're laughing at this, but think about this. Okay, think about this. Two ways to think about this. One, uh, your boy Bill, uh, took uh what is it uh two billion and turned it to 200 billion in like whatever amount of years uh was a master when he was doing it right super leveraged took high probability trades super leveraged right so i mean he was a hero until he wasn't right so i mean if you can figure this out and get out when you can that's fine obviously you only do it when it's not your last dollar when you have in excess excess money to kind of play around with this should absolutely be 100 percent yolo slash play money uh, and in fact, you shouldn't do it. But I mean, you know, if you have an interesting relationship with money and you have money to do it, 
why the hell not? It's your money. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, the second piece is, you know, it's really funny when we do stuff like this in the stock market, people are like, oh my God, you're leveraging like 40X. That's because the thing happens so damn fast, right? But if you do it in real estate, you could lose it just the same in a real estate market crash. Uh, <laughs> and then that would take you 10 years to crash and lose it all. But the thing is, it's like, oh, it's so good. He leveraged so much money in real estate. He's such a pro, you know. Uh, but in the stock market, it's just not the same, right? So, I mean, think for yourself. Do your own thing. Uh, but if you're bored and uh, you're sick of waiting for this dip to end and uh, you're sick of waiting for Tom Lee's everything rally, then go ahead. Have some fun. Play around. That's what I'm doing. Uh, and this keeps me from selling all my positions that I know I'm supposed to be holding that I'm, I'm literally holding because I know that we might get another choppy month and then hopefully the rally that everybody is expecting. But I mean, with this uh, FOMC, maybe a good time to uh, leverage really deeply on the uh, short side because who knows how de big, big this dip is. I'm not telling you to do anything. We're not financial advisors, of course. We're just people who look at data. So thanks for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.